Okay guys, so this stove here now, again, <coughs> excuse me, it's a Gibraltar brand, but this stove is a little bit bigger. It's deeper and it's wider, and this stove has a blower on it. You can tell by the holes on the side here, both sides, and then heat also comes out through here. There's an opening up in here, and um, we have a blower attached to it. I don't always use the blower because um, I just don't, but sometimes when it's really cold out you might want to, the blower to be coming on. What we do is, um, we can, that pot's just like an ornament for her, but it helps to, you know, it's mass, cast iron is mass, so it keeps the heat. Um, this pot has water in it. Uh, my wife likes to have a little bit of water on the top of the stove. She says it keeps uh, things from drying out so much. And I think it's true because the uh, paneling in the house sometimes dries up pretty much. I use a bucket like this to go get coal in the morning or wood to get the fire started if I need. But this is the coal scuttle we use. Again, the shaker. Um, just to give you an idea of how it's... What time is it? It's uh, 10 o'clock. So, I'll be fixing this stove for the night. Now, I just want to show you, there's a blower on this stove down here, you can see. And I have it wired in such a way that I just turn the switch on. And it makes it easy for the blower. Now, you can mount on the back of these stoves a, uh, a thermostat that would turn the blower on it on and off by itself. This one did not come with that, but I really should get that. So I think I have somewhere I gotta look and see, but I'd like to have it on there. So anyway, this is like a double wall stove. So it's a lot wider than the one I showed you this morning. And um, it's also a little deeper. Uh, just a simple stove pipe, again with that flapped damper. And I only leave it on a 45 at night because you want any any problem where you might have carbon monoxide building up with coal, you want to make sure that it can go out. Now, what we have here, as you can see, there's coal there, but that uh, fire needs to have more coal. So, so So what will happen is now, to use the fire, what you need to do when you put fresh coal on it like that, and you shut the door, you want to open this damper here, so that it's straight up and down. Because if you don't, it's a possibility that you get fumes building up. And then you want to open this bottom slider. Now, sometimes these sliders work opposite of one another. I don't know why they make them like that, but this one is open. Like you can see, it's a lot bigger than the size of a pea. So this one is open all the way. And uh, when this fire turns blue, flames coming out of it, that's when I'll dampen this the size of a pea. So I'll show you that then after this thing gets going a little bit. You can see what I was saying about the window. It's from uh, sh shaking it. A little bit ago, my wife shook it and put some, a little shovel or two of coal on it just to make sure that it was going to stay burning until I fixed it for the night. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that this there's a big tiled area here. Like, it's two feet from the end of where this... Now, this is actually ceramic, so it's not going to hurt anything. Any hot coals that come out of it will not hurt this. But... Um, I had carpeting in here, we changed it because a piece of coal had come out and melted the carpet, made it look like crap, so we wanted it fixed. So anyway, you can see the big area there. And then the back of this is all stone. So there's nothing to really worry about. This is just a 16 by 16 chimney block veneered with stone. It's the stone we picked up from around the yard when we first moved here. So. That's what I built there. And um, so I'll show you what this looks like when it's time to dampen it off. So right now we put coal on it. 
you turn the, the uh, flapper straight up and down, the flap valve, and um, we have the damper wide open. So in a little while I'll show you what this looks like and how you want to dampen that off. So this is a thermometer that's not too far from the stove. I don't know if you can see. There it goes. 70 degrees in the, in the kitchen dining room area. Like I say, the blower mounts to the bottom of this. There's four bolts. There's a hole in the bottom and it blows heat around the firebox and it comes out in the, through these vents. So it blows this way from the stove as well as that way from the stove and then straight out from the stove. So this is our front porch and normally we sit like on these wicker furniture. There's a lot of light in here because of the doors and all that are in here. But in the winter time what I do is I bring nine buckets of coal in. Nine buckets of coal last a whole week plus. So I don't have to go getting coal like one of the guys mentioned to going out and get it at night. I don't have to do that anymore. When I was a kid I'd forget, but now I don't because, you know, as you grow older. So there's eight more buckets there. This will last till next Saturday. And then outside here we have a, uh, um, I think that's a 40 gallon uh, drum that she goes just outside the door and puts the ashes in there. And what I do is once a, you know, whenever the ash pan thing is full, I'll take that with the, with the four-wheeler and I'll go dump it in the road or throw it in the road somewhere or wherever we need ashes. Or I have a, a place that I can put it that I use as landfill. Now this particular chimney has a clean-out door and it's, um, regrettably, it's on the inside of the house. But it's not a big deal. What we'll do is... Um, We'll take a, a vacuum. We have a vacuum with a big um, hose on it, like a four inch or three inch hose. What I'll do is, when I go to clean the chimney, I'll bring the vacuum and she'll set it there by the door, and then I'll start cleaning and brushing the chimney. And usually, that vacuum cleaner can suck up everything that would come out of there. And she keeps this here to clean up her ashes and stuff if she drops anything. Uh, guys, while we're waiting for the fire to burn up, I just want to show you something. We are at 2,280 feet above sea level. And these are native rocks that we pulled out of the ground with seashell fossils. Fossils. You can see this one a little better. Um, let me see if there's one that's any better than that. We had a couple of them, but yeah, down here you can see there were fossils inside this these rocks. Um, here you can see the actual outline of the shells right here. So pretty interesting that at this elevation we were picking, you know, seashell or shells from some kind of water type creature. Anyway, I use that as veneer to keep the heat away from the wood paneling that's on the walls. And Sally's a bit of a romantic, so you can see that top stone we put up there shaped like a heart. She saved that just special for that. There's fossils in this one and that one. And you can see there's blue flames coming up through that coal. A little bit of red there. It's not going to hurt anything. So this stove gets dampened now. So what that means is we're going to shut the door and make sure it's closed. Okay. Then we're going to take this and make it the size of a pea. Remember I was telling you that up at the other house right here. This is the thing we're talking about. That little black hole there. So it's about the size of a pea. And that stove will burn all night till 7 o'clock in the morning. And then at 7 o'clock I'll show you what it looks like. So it's 11 now. I'm going to bed a little bit late. And tomorrow morning then 
I'll show you, you know, what it looks like in the morning after burning all night. Because right now, if you put a, if you were to fill that with wood, by tomorrow morning, which would be, you know, you're looking at eight hours from now, the wood would be all burned and it would just be a couple of hot coals in the bottom, if you're lucky. A lot of times you have to start the fire again, but I'll show you what happens with coal. Okay guys, so Sally was up before me this morning, so she, uh, I'll tell you what she did here. First thing she did was turn the damper straight up and down with the pipe, okay? Then the next thing she did was she took the door, she opened this door right here, and she took the shaker. Now the ash pan was inside there, and she shook that, okay, until she saw red come out, a little bit of red. So once she had that in the ash pan, then she shut the door and took the ash pan out. Now she takes the ash pan out when it's full so we can get a good draft in there. Not that that interferes with the bottom of the stove. And then um, she took the ash pan out. Now she'll take this outside and empty it, but it's really icy out there right now. And I'd rather if she didn't go out. So then she took two shovels. You can see this was full here. So she took about two shovels of coal and put it on top of there. And this is a very nice hot fire. Now it's not quite burned up enough to turn the damper yet, but it's getting there. You can see the blue with the red. And that's, you know, overnight. Now it's only 7 o'clock when she did that, so it's not a big, you know, it's not like we were taxing it to last. But the coal stove works really well as far as lasting and longevity. So, anyway, that's about it for this coal stove. Now, the one that's up at the house, if you remember, I put a little bit of coal on it, but I throw, put three logs on top of it just to keep it burning when the coal burned out because I didn't really have enough coal for it. I didn't take enough up there, and like I say, it's so icy outside. I had to put a bucket at the end of our driveway so nobody comes down it because it's, it's just, I had to use a four-wheeler to slide down and throw the bucket off while I was going. Alright, so have a good one, guys. That's the end of this video for now. If you have any questions about the stove or anything, um, let me know. Oh, I do got to show you about the um, stove up at the house. I'll show you that then. So as you can see, it's only 35 degrees out there, so whatever's melting is melting super slow. But the problem is, everything is a coating of ice on top of it now. It's got at least a half inch coating of ice, so it's very hard to walk on anything. And in the driveway, it's all solid ice. Yeah, what you're seeing there isn't just wet. It is solid half inch or better thick of ice. And the problem with it, it out here I can sort of walk. But going up there, I can't walk at all. I had to use the four-wheeler to come. I actually drove this direction, went around the, the whole property and came back down the hill to throw, the bu to throw a bucket out in front. So Because we got to, to my, my neighbor who's in his 80s comes almost every day no matter what. And I don't want him coming down this driveway. He'll run into my freaking garage. So I hope he takes the warning. Hey guys, um, I wanted to show you this stove going from, um, you know, what it looked like after a night of burning, but it was so icy this morning I couldn't get up here. And everybody knows what I'm about to show you who, who has a wood stove. Like right now this fire, for all intents and purposes, looks dead. But if you open the damper on this, it doesn't take much at all. What did it take, like three seconds for this stove to start to roar? And um, this is one of the reasons why the door, the, the engineering that's done with these stoves are that the openings in the slots are enough to control the burn a little better than it would be like when the door is wide open. Well, I know a lot of people open the door to get the fire going. I do the same thing, but it's really not the right way to do it. You should leave the door closed and just open the well, we call that the slider, but it's the damper all the way, and it'll help to keep the fire going. Now, you can see the fire's dying back just slightly, and it'll die back to the point where the air going in and the air going out is like an equal amount, and it's a nice 
clean draw on the fire and it'll help it to burn. And like I say, now just watch it. You can even hear it. See, that's because the, the stoves are designed today to not burn out of control. So, um, that's not to say that they can't, depending upon what's going wrong with it. You know, if you have creosote in the chimney or whatever and that ignites, you can be in for a lot of trouble because creosote burns at a real high temperature. Um, one of the things, when you go to build a fire that I'll show you, when, when you put newspaper um, to build a fire, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm wasting my time telling you this, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there who don't know this, but when you build a fire, especially when you're going to start from scratch, like let's say you, you can see the grates, the grates are clean. The best way to build a fire, and in my eyes the only way, don't take folded up newspaper, you know, fold it up and put it in the bottom of the thing there. That's not going to help you build a good fire. What you want to do is you want to take and make balls out of it. Okay, I take the newspaper, open it up, and make a ball like this, okay? Because this ball will help multi-surfaces start to ignite at one time, and you'll find that it gets a lot hotter than if you start at one end and let it work across, okay? Because this almost ignites right away. And then what you want to do is, like, you'll have paper like this, filling the whole bottom of the coal of the bed of the stove on top of the grates now. You put a whole bunch of these in there. Like in this case, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight sheets of paper bolded, you know, folded up like this or crinkled like this, throw it in on top of the uh, grates. And then on top of that, what you want to do is put small pieces of wood. Now, um, I have some wood here I'll just show you. Ideal stuff. Now, a lot of this came from me working in the house here, but you know, ideal stuff is pieces about this diameter. Of course, they can be long, thin stuff like this. Anything small, e even this I'd split in half to start the fire. You can use these by putting them in there this way, so you'd lay a bunch of them in there. You want a good bed of good dry wood. I mean, even you can use some, like this is some shim stock. This stuff, this stuff's not too good. I don't know what kind of wood this is, but it doesn't really burn that great. It doesn't seem to get hot like oak does. But anyway, you can put little pieces of wood like that in, but you want to line all the newspaper, pretty much cover the newspaper with wood like this. Okay? And then if you're going to build a coal fire, you want to put this a little bit thicker, maybe three thick so you get a good wood fire because newspaper, you can put all the newspaper in there you want and it will never ignite coal, okay? You could take newspaper, roll it up in a big roll, put it in there, put coal on top of it and it's really not going to ignite the coal. I mean, it just doesn't get hot enough. So you need to put wood on top of, you know, kindling on top of the um, paper to be able to get the coal to burn. Now the ideal thing here with a wood stove is the more you put this stuff, like you need a little bit of space, you know, for the flames, but the more you put this together, close together in there, and you put that on top of one another, the better the bed's going to be for the coal. Because when you throw the coal in there, if there's nothing, if there's no wood in there at all to light the fire, the coal, I mean, what's going to happen is the coal is going to go down through the grates and you're going to lose a lot of coal. Not all of it, but a lot of it. So think about it. When the paper burns up, if the wood's not burning by then, um, the wood's not going to catch and then you're not going to have the coal burn and then you're going to have to take the coal out, shake it down through the shaker and restart that and that's a messy process. So what you want to do is have, like for this stove, wood this size, a whole bunch of them, you know, put it in there, maybe two layers. If you're going to go this direction, that's fine. It doesn't matter if you go anyway. Just put a <coughs> bunch of wood in there. And the better you can make the wood like a little bit of a platform on top of the paper, what I do is I throw coal on top of the wood right away. So in other words, I have wood on top of the paper, the length of this, and I'll throw maybe two shovels of coal on there. 
Now I'm talking about this small coal shovel here. I'm not talking about any, you know, any kind of a great big shovel. And what that does is it puts enough coal on top of the wood so that the wood can burn really fast and hot, but it'll also ignite the coal. And then once you see the coals are red and the wood's burning really good, you need to keep putting coal on. As long as the wood is burning good, you can cover the whole top of that thing with coal and um, the coal will ignite and then once the coal ignites and you get the blue flames from it and stuff, that's when you can dampen it. Okay? So, now you can see with this stove, uh, even with the damper all the way open, the stove is not getting hotter and hotter and hotter. It's burning at a certain rate. But if I open this, you can hear it starting to burn at a higher rate and you don't want that and you especially don't want that with coal if you put a bed of coal in there the temperature of the coal is going to get a whole lot hotter than what the temperature of the wood will get I mean wood gets hot don't get me wrong and wood gets good and hot especially the hardwoods but they don't get like coal does coal has this intense prolonged heat like that wood in there is consuming itself Con coal consumes itself but at a very slow rate okay and that's why coal lasts longer than wood when it comes to burn time now naturally if you don't know how to burn a fire to begin with you can put three logs in here and have the fire out burn completely out in an hour or you can put three logs in there and have them going for you know eight hours or six hours it depends on you um, and it depends on your stove as well. Now the good thing about this stove, this stove has a gasket all the way around it and so does the door. So when I close this stove you can hear it's not metal against metal there, okay? Neither the top nor the bottom. So um, like I say the holes that are cut into this stove are designed to not allow the stove to burn at an extreme rate of heat but nonetheless you still got to keep track of it and you really don't want to leave this all the way open because all you're doing is wasting the stuff so really you want to slow this down a little at a point where it's burning nice and slowly or gently you know if you need the fire to last all night you make it like I say a size of a pea or less half a pea in the, at the damper if you watch my last video but you can see that the fire is starting to slow down there. Now what you, what you need to do with, the, this is a hand-fired stove. In other words, there's nothing electric on here. There is nothing on here that's calculated other than the size of these holes so that it doesn't go wild on you. But you need to learn where to set your draft control because the chimney is the thing that's going to determine what that is. Now you can see this the, the fire is slowly dying down. There's no fire flames over here but there is over here. So if I open this a little more, like let's say that much, soon you'll start to see flames on this side. Now it doesn't take too long but once they die down it takes a little bit to get going. So what you need to do is work with this damper to determine you know what's the best setting that's the same thing with a wood stove you know you have those dials that you turn and you can almost close them and stuff that's the same thing as what these sliding uh, dampers are it's just about the same thing so you know in fact they make coal stoves with those round dials on and they're nice because the stove is airtight you can open them up very small amount to keep the coal burning real long and once you know how to do it you'll you'll just know you got to get you have to test it a little bit and watch the fire and keep an eye on your chimney know what the weather's going to be outside wind greatly affects the draft on a chimney you people know that who burn wood um, so you know the stove if it has nothing electric on it to handle it you have to be the one that's going to handle this stuff and for me personally I like handling this stove I like knowing that I can make it hotter or colder whenever I want to so I don't know if you can see on this side here but you can see the flames are starting to uh, get higher there 
So somewhere in that ne neck of the woods where I'm at is a little bit too much and if I go too far it's you know it's going to close it down too much. So you know like I say I've determined that a pea size seems to work best. So what I'll do here now with this is I'll also close the damper that's up on the pipe there on the pipe. I'll close that a little bit maybe like to a 45 Something like that. Oh, that pipe's kind of hot. Now, that pipe is double walled from here up, just so you know. But, and I'll explain the chimney to you later what I have here. But, um, you know, I, I can leave this stove now like this. I can walk out of here. I, there's nothing for me to worry about. This fire will contain itself in there and it'll probably be good for, I don't know, probably about three hours with the way that it's burning there. Four hours. So, when I come back here, then I'm going to have a bunch of uh, stony, knobby looking red coals on there. And that's, when if you can get that and the coals are fairly big yet, the uh, wood, wood uh, is fairly big and it's red like that, that's when you can start a coal fire. You can use that to get coal going. So anyway, like I say, it's getting late already. It's probably around 5 o'clock or not 5, but I don't know, 20 or 5 I would say. So I'm just sort of fixing this and then I'm going to come back later and do it again. So I'm going to leave the camera up here and when I come back up and I go to put coal on it for the night, I'll show you how that works. So just to re-show you this, right now there's logs in there, okay? Now really when you open this door, you see smoke coming out, you should open the damper first on the pipe so the smoke doesn't come out. But anyway, um, there's wood in there now looks like it'll probably take a couple hours to burn down at this rate and, I, and there's no need for me to hurry with it. So I'll let that burn down and I, I'm hoping when I come back it'll be just right for coal. If it's not right for coal, I think I'll bring a little bit of extra kindling up here with me so I can actually film how you get the fire going. And then after this segment here, I'm going to talk about getting rid of ashes, what you do with ashes, the, the hazard of ashes if there is any. And all the other little things that go along with how I handle, you know, the, the coal itself, plus getting rid of the ashes, the prices of stuff. I'll go over some of that with you as well. Okay, guys, so you can see the ashes in there, the embers, how red and everything they are. This is what I would call perfect ready for coal. Now I don't have electricity in the house here so I'm using a flashlight to kind of make things happen. So I'm just going to uh, put some coal into the fire here. I'm just hoping the camera stays working because sometimes it goes off when it doesn't have any light. Alright, so you can see the size of my shovel there. So there's about two inches of uh, red hot embers underneath there. I want to make sure that the damper on this stove pipe is open. I want to open this one all the way. And what I'm doing is putting the hole methodically across the whole thing. Now it's four. Six shovels. Now you can actually put more in there, but because it's not very cold out right now, the temperatures are up in the high 30s uh, right at the moment. I'm not going to worry about keeping this fire burning real hard. So now that the coal's on there, what we have to do is wait for blue flames to come out of that coal. So we want to shut the door, okay, and we want to. Uh, we're going to leave this open all the way on the bottom, the slider. The uh, stove pipe up there is turned up and down so that it's uh, totally open. And um, I think I'll open this door just to help the stove along a little bit. You can see, I'll move the light away, you can see there's some orange down in there. Uh, that's a reflection off of the embers that are inside there. So this is 
you can hear the coal crackling. I think you can hear that. So the coal is actually not going to take too long before it gets really hot and going. So we're going to uh, just wait a little bit here. And I'm going to stay right here by it. But I'm going to shut the camera off for a, for a couple minutes just to let it burn. So what's important for you to know that right now um, when you put the coal on the fire and the coal is not hot yet, this is the most dangerous part of a coal stove. And the danger isn't in something you can see. The danger is in what's known as carbon monoxide. Coal gives off carbon monoxide and a lot of it when it's um, not burning yet. When it's starting to burn, I mean it gives it off even when it burns, but when it's hot, real hot, you can, uh, um, for lack of better terms, you can assume that the carbon monoxide is going out the chimney. Now I'll have to maybe rephrase that, but I'm going to say that for right now. So um, what you want to do then is you want to make sure that uh, the bottom damper there on the bottom, this door here, is open. You want to make sure that that is straight up and down and open. Okay, that other secondary damper up there. And all we're waiting for is for the coal to get some blue flames on it. Now, yeah, there's nothing in there yet, but it will. I have a tendency to want to um, open the door a little bit. So, since I'm right here, I'm going to open it. I mean, if I take the light away, you can see that it's getting pretty red in there. But I just want some air to go through there to get this thing to start burning a little quicker so I can uh, dampen it off and go down to the house because I don't have to stay up here with this that long. But it, uh, this is more than warm in here. You know, it's probably, I mean, close to 70 in the house right now. So, like I say, it doesn't take much to heat it up when the temperature outside's in the high 30s. Okay, so you can see those blue flames in there. When the coal is burning like that, okay, let me just light this flashlight. When the coal is burning like that, all right, now you want to make sure that you shut this bottom door, okay, and you can dampen this off because to about the size of a half of a pea. Now, I'm going to leave that top open there because I don't want it to get too hot in here. So in other words, that damper on the top, I'm going to leave that open. I'm just going to control the burn with the damper sliding thing on the bottom here. Okay, so I'm going to slide that to the thickness of about a half of a pea or so. So you can see the gas coming off inside the stove. The coal is going to burn. When you see that, that coal is hot underneath there. That's what's making that get like that. Now we want to keep this door shut so we have that good draft in there. Now if we open the slider up all the way, at this point that stove would get hotter and hotter and hotter and it would overheat because it's going to get too hot. So right now we're going to take, like I say, and just close this the size of a pea and you'll lose the blue flame in there now. So in other words, let me just show you, like right now, you can't see that blue flame in there, okay? The flame in there is missing. But if you um, give this thing a chance to get some excess oxygen in there, all of a sudden you'll see that blue flame pick up. There it goes, okay? And that is where the heat is coming from. There's a lot of heat there. But it's also, like I say, gas is coming off that. And I'm not positive of which is, the, which is showing me the carbon, carbon monoxide, the blue or the white. So what you do is you just take for granted that when you put coal on, you're making carbon monoxide. And then you want to keep the damper on the top of the stove open so that the... Uh, Fumes can go out the uh, chimney, and then you want to, uh, like I say, dampen this bottom off. 
but you regulate, and I think you can see that you regulate this by how much air goes into it. It's just like a wood stove, except you have to understand the part about the carbon monoxide. If I was to shut this damper off up here, carbon monoxide would build up inside the stove, and it might get to the point where it would actually come out the vents on the bottom of the stove. Okay, it could even come out the joints of the pipe where the pipe goes into the back of the stove if you don't have a good draft. But I know we have a good draft. One other way you can tell that you have a good draft is when you take and you close this door, if you put your hand here, you can literally feel the air rushing past your hand to go into the stove. Okay, and it's important that you understand this. Because this is how you get rid of the carbon, carbon monoxide buildup that's inside the stove. Now I don't have any kind of a CO2 detector or CO detector here at the house right now, but before, when I'm finished with it, I'll have one in here. And it's not the kind that goes in the ceiling, because from what I understand, carbon monoxide stays low to the ground. So what we'll actually be doing is having um, a, a detector in the wall socket. I have one of those down at the house as well. Never had a problem ever since I've been a little kid following this. Uh, one thing is that having the airtight doors and the gaskets on the doors make all the difference. Uh, so when you have an old fashioned stove, like a stove that was built prior to the, I don't know, I guess maybe 1970s, you have to be careful because if it doesn't have a gasket around it, you can get carbon monoxide coming through there and it will kill you. So all you have to do is just make sure of you know what I'm saying. This is how you burn the fire up. Now like a, as far as that blue goes, I would like to see that get even a little bit hotter in there before I would let it go. But since that's staying nice and flames that way, I'm just going to let this go for the night. So like I say, I'm going to adjust the bottom here to half of a P. I'm leaving that uh, open up top there. And I'm just repeating myself so I'll make sure I clarify it. And uh, that's it. That stove's done. So tomorrow when I come up here in the morning, you'll see that this stove will be pretty much um, ready for coal, but it'll still be very warm, you know, hot. Not just warm, but hot. Okay, guys, so the next thing that I want to talk about um, and it won't be on this video. I'm going to end this video now. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is about the ashes, getting rid of the ashes, and some of the aspects of that. Because sometimes, you know, people call it toxic. To a degree it may be, but it's not what some tree huggers would say that it is. So I'll explain some of that after. If you have any questions on this, don't be afraid to ask. If you have comments, and if you're some kind of a gas guy and you understand the ga different gases, you know, don't be afraid to let us know what you know. I'm not saying I know everything about it. I just know what I've done all of my life and I have never had a problem with a stove. Okay, guys, have a good one. Okay, guys, so <coughs> you can see that this stove here, now I'm back down at my house. This is the stove, it's, um, let's see, it's 10 or 20 of 7. So this stove is going to stay like this for a while. It, this stove would probably burn for a good 6-8 hours just the way it is. Now it's not what we would call, you know, banked over for the night. So um, what we'll do is we'll leave this go for a couple of hours and then we'll take and fill it right to the top of that metal piece you see here and then dampen that and that'll be good for the whole night.